Welcome back to Mustard Seed Home Setting. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Megan, and in today's video, we're gonna go harvesting more cool weather crops before the hot summer heat comes in. So let's get started. The first thing I want to show you real quick before we start harvesting is I always have at least some sort of a basket or a bucket with me to gather the harvest. Some gloves just in case. Those are my pruning scissors or, you know, scissors to cut the, the harvest. And then the shovel just in case I have to shovel anything out for any reason. I just have everything ready to go so that I don't have to run and get any tools or supplies. So one thing I want to point out before I actually start to harvest is if you see that little baby Swiss chard, and this is with anything lettuce, Swiss chard, you want to pick the outer leaves, which would be these pieces right here, and you don't want to touch that piece because you want that to grow so that you can harvest that later. So here I am harvesting most, if not all, of the Swiss chard on my two green stalks. This is the leaf green stalk, which is about seven inches deep, but I planted a whole variety of Swiss chard and I'm just getting my second harvest. I had a plentiful harvest a couple of months ago and I was pleasantly surprised to see another harvest. Now Swiss chard is a new vegetable for my family and I, but we have greatly enjoyed it sauteed with olive oil and some onion and garlic. I think everything tastes great with onion and garlic, but we have really enjoyed it and I definitely plan to plant this again next year, especially in the green stalks. I think they did very well in the green stalks and they gave me at least two harvests from being planted in there. Now make sure to stick to the end because I'm gonna show you the full harvest from my patio as well as my backyard. One of the many things that I've enjoyed about gardening is getting into the different varieties of vegetables. So I wanted to share some of the different varieties of Swiss chard that I planted here. And this one I'm about to show you, I think might be either the orange or the yellow Swiss chard. It's such a beautiful color as you can see. But I've also planted pink Swiss chard, magenta Swiss chard, ruby red Swiss chard, as well as Ford Hook Giant Swiss chard. And I just love all the different varieties, especially the different colors. It's not only nutritious food, but it's such a beautiful vegetable to see growing right outside on your patio and in your garden space. So here is all of the Swiss chard that I just got from one green stock. This is an 18 quart bucket. It's not completely full, but it's almost full. And then with the little leaves that I showed you, hopefully I'll have a few more that can grow so that I can harvest just a few more before the summer comes. And this is a little bit more Swiss chard that I grabbed from the other green stock. There was just two more Swiss chard plants there. Look at how beautiful the colors are. Like I said in my part two tour of my garden, tour of my backyard and patio, this Swiss chard has been so prolific. This is my second harvest of, uh, of Swiss chard and I'm definitely gonna be planting these again. And they last a long time in the refrigerator too. So 
Let's go in the backyard and get some more harvest. Okay, so we're gonna harvest some of the cabbages that I have because I do not think that they're gonna get any bigger. And I do not remember which kind of cabbage this is. One thing I wanna get better at is coming out here and rewriting the names on my tags because from the sun and water, it just wears off. So beautiful. And this little cabbage is much smaller than the other two, but I don't think it's gonna get any bigger than this, especially because the weather's gonna start to get hotter this week, so I'm just gonna cut it off. Hopefully you can see this plant. These are my peas right here. Since my last garden tour, my part one backyard garden tour, let me see if I can get this up close. I don't know if you can see all the white buds on there, but it has just blossomed so much since the tour. And I feel like in the last couple of days, everything has just almost doubled, which is another reason why I'm out here harvesting but I actually had my first meal with some of the peas the other night with them and they were delicious. Now here's some more cabbages that I'm going to harvest. I think this is the Copenhagen. I'm not exactly sure they're cone-like as they grow, but this one is definitely ready to harvest. Oh, look at, there's a <laughs> cilantro plant under there. Okay, and here's another cabbage head that I do think needs to be harvested because I don't think it's gonna get any bigger than this either. So real quick, I wanted to show you this particular cabbage. Not only was it growing its main head, but then it was growing a second one on the side. It's a little firm, probably not edible, but I just thought that was so interesting. Okay, so this cabbage, I'm gonna leave here. It actually does feel like it's going to sprout and seed on me, so I'm just gonna let it sit here for right now. But I am gonna gather the lettuces that are around it. This is a romaine lettuce. And this one I unfortunately forgot the name of, but it is a beautiful lettuce. And of course this last romaine too.
Okay, so this bed is just overflowing with food from romaine lettuce to carrots. So I'm probably gonna harvest maybe two heads of lettuce and keep the other ones, but probably harvest those within the next couple of days to a week so that I can eat them. But definitely some of these carrots need to come out. Okay, so here's one of my romaine heads that I'm gonna harvest out of this bed. Look at how beautiful that is. This is the first time I've grown carrots to its full maturity, so I'm super excited to harvest these. Look at that, how exciting. That is super exciting. Look at how beautiful they are. They're so vibrant orange. I wanted to quickly add, as I'm pulling out these carrots, gardening is rewarding in so many ways. And one of them for me is feeding my family nutritious food that was grown right in our backyard. It gives me such a feeling of accomplishment. I wanted to quickly mention one of the benefits of being a gardener is learning through failure. I've learned a lot through failure. But these carrots, as funny as they look, some of them weren't edible and that was simply me just not harvesting them on time. And one thing that I really want to get better at is not only marking when I planted them, but keeping an eye on when they need to be harvested. Here's the other romaine lettuce that I'm gonna be harvesting as well. This is huge.
Now my family and I have been enjoying these carrots by just chopping them up in small pieces and throwing them into the salads from the lettuce that I harvested. But there's so many fun things that you can do with carrots from just eating them raw or chopping them up and putting them into soups. There's a cabbage meat soup that I make that I just absolutely love, especially with the cabbage from the garden. And also roasting them is delicious too. I really hope that you have been enjoying this video and watching this beautiful harvest that I've been so blessed to have in my garden. And if you really enjoyed this, could you please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing? It would really help me to make more videos like this and share my journey with you all. So I did leave some of the carrots still in there because what I noticed is when I planted these seeds a couple months ago, not all of them sprouted and then recently as the weather warmed up just a bit, there were some more that sprouted. So I'm just going to leave them in there and then pull them out before I officially plant my summer crops. So here are all of my seedlings that I started weeks ago. I have basil, peppers, tomatoes, flowers, herbs, asparagus. I have found that starting from seed is so much less expensive than purchasing each of these plants individually. And I cannot wait to show you the growth when I plant them. Okay, the last two cabbages I'm going to harvest are these two right here. I don't think the heads are going to get any bigger than this, so I'd rather get something than nothing. Thank you for stopping by and coming along with me as I harvest all of this food that I've been blessed with. My goal is to, at some point, grow most, if not all, of my own produce without always relying on the grocery store. And one of the skills that I have greatly enjoyed with my homestead is gardening. It is so rewarding in so many ways, and I hope it's a skill that you want to learn too. I appreciate you coming by. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye. So it got dark on me, but I want to show you the final harvest. There's all the carrots. I'll also definitely be harvesting the carrot tops. I'll probably make a powder out of my freeze dryer. I've been enjoying my freeze dryer as one of my ways to preserve. And then look at all the cabbages. And this one is a romaine. cabbage and then some more romaine right here and then all of our Swiss chard super excited with the harvest